Just before dawn on Friday morning, what we call Good Friday, Centurion Alexis was at the fortress of Antonia, and the high priest Caiaphas and the chief priests marched Jesus to the fortress of Antonia. The high priest got there and he greeted the centurion Alexis and said to him, It has been arranged with Governor Pilate that this man Jesus is to be executed today. Centurion Alexis took the orders, took hold of the prisoner, marched him into the courtroom at the fortress of Antonia. And there, Governor Pilate was seated at the judgment chair and at the table with his gods before him. He was handed the charge seat and Jesus stood before Pilate. Pilate glanced at the charge sheet and then he said, where are this man's accusers? Centurion Alexis said, sir, they're outside. They won't come into your courtroom because they don't want to defile themselves for their religious festival, the Passover. So Pilate got up, he brushed past Jesus and came out, stood on the porch, looking down on basically the courtyard before him and there were the religious teachers. And Pilate said, what charge do you bring against this man? Caiaphas, the high priest, responded, if he was not a criminal, we would not have brought him to you. And Pilate said, well, go and judge him by your own laws then. And Caiaphas said, because of Roman occupation, our laws don't allow us to execute anyone. So Governor Pilate repeated, so you want him judged by Roman law, what charge do you bring against this man? Caiaphas, the high priest, said, we bring three charges. He corrupts the nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar, and he claims to be a king. Governor Pilate knew the charges were mocked up. He said, I will judge him by the most serious charge, high treason against Rome. He walked back into the courtroom. He sat down on the judge's chair, and he said to Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, king, the way you use the term as a political king, or the way the Jews use the term as a divine king. Am I a Jew, Pilate said? It was your people, your chief priests that handed you over to me. What is it that you have done? And Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would be fighting to prevent me from being handed over to you. My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. And Pilate just scoffed and said, you are a king then. And Jesus said, it is for this reason I was born and for this reason I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. And at that, Pilate laughed and said, truth, what is truth? Truth is relative. He brushed past Jesus, went out onto the porch, the courtyard, looked down upon the religious leaders and said, I have examined the prisoner and I find no basis for the charges you bring against him. And Caiaphas and the chief priests shouted back, he has been corrupting the nation. He started in Galilee in the north and now he's around, arrived here a hundred miles to the south in Jerusalem. And Pilate said, is this man a Galilean? I said, yes, he was born in the town of Nazareth. And Pilate said, that's not under my jurisdiction. So he told Centurion Alexis to escort the prisoner at 7 a.m. to King Herod's palace, who was in Jerusalem for the Passover festival. He said, allow Herod to deal with him the same way he dealt with John the Baptist. So Centurion Alexis took Jesus to the palace of Herod, the ruler of the north, and there at 7 a.m., Herod was greatly pleased to see Jesus. He'd heard about Jesus. He even thought that Jesus was the reincarnation of John the Baptist. And he hoped to see some miracles performed in front of him. So he asked Jesus many questions. But Jesus said nothing. And Jesus did nothing. Herod became quite frustrated. So some of his soldiers threw a robe on Jesus. 
They started to smack him around the face a little. Give him a bit. Who hit you? Prophesy. Tell us who it was. And Jesus said nothing. And Jesus did nothing. Finally, King Herod got fed up with it all. He read to the charge sheet and discovered that Jesus wasn't born in the north in Nazareth. He was born in the south in Bethlehem. And that's in Governor Pilate's jurisdiction. So at 7.30, Jesus was marched back through Jerusalem on the streets, back to the fortress of Antonia. Many people were coming out on the streets, waking up in the morning as the sun was beginning to rise. And they were wondering why is the religious leader being marched by Roman soldiers to the fortress of Antonia? So they followed and gathered in the courtyard. When Centurion Alexis arrived back with Jesus and the soldiers, Caiaphas was about to leave to go to his accommodation. He looked up from the table and he said, why is the prisoner back here? Centurion Alexis said, well, sir, Herod said that Jesus wasn't born in Nazareth in the north. He was born in Bethlehem in the south. And that's your responsibility. So Pilate went back out onto the porch, looked down on the uh, courtyard and saw the great mass of people that had arrived from the chief priests and Caiaphas. And he said, I've examined the prisoner and I find no basis for the charges you bring against him and neither does Herod, for he has sent the prisoner back to me. Therefore, as it is the custom at this time of the year, that the governor shall release one prisoner I will punish this man, Jesus, and then have him released. No, Caiaphas shouted. It is our responsibility to name the prisoner that goes free, not yours. We want this man sentenced to death. And then one of the chief priests shouted out a name, a terrible, terrible man who'd done some terrible, terrible atrocities. He shouts out, Barabbas, release Barabbas, Barabbas, and everyone joins in. Release Barabbas, who was on the death sentence. So Pilate receives a note at this point in time from his wife, which says, don't have anything to do with this innocent man, Jesus. And Pilate was superstitious like his wife. So he ordered that Jesus be flogged. And then he signed the orders for Barabbas to be set free. Jesus was taken down to the dungeon in the courtyard. And at that, the Romans at the time had a flogging called 40 minus 1, which was basically the Romans would flog a man. They believed if they flogged a man 40 times, the man would die. So they would take the man to the brink of death with 39. And after they'd done that, they too put a robe on him, threw it round his sh shoulders. They beat him, they hit him, and they got a crown of thorns, much like barbed wire, and they shoved it on his head. And as they smacked him around a bit, they said, you're the king of the Jews. Where are your followers? Finally, Jesus staggered back, held by two Roman soldiers into the courtroom. The two soldiers were really annoyed because the blood was pouring with the perspiration from Jesus' face and dripping on their uniforms. So they're trying to distance themselves, yet still hold him. When Pilate saw Jesus, he said, that should satisfy the crowd. He then walked out onto the porch and said, I am bringing him out to you to let you know I find no basis for the charges you bring him against him. And Jesus staggered out, still held, then holds one of the columns. And Pilate said, here is the man. And at that, he expected the crowd to say, release him. But instead, the crowd said, crucify, crucify, crucify. And Pilate yelled back, you take him and crucify him. I find no basis for the charges you bring against him. And Caiaphas the high priest said, we have a law. And according to that law, this man must die, for he claimed to be the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid. He stepped inside and started to circle Jesus, still held by the Roman soldiers. He said, where do you come from? Jesus said nothing. Do you refuse to answer me? 
Don't you realise I have the power to free you or to crucify you? And Jesus, with all his strength, after the beating that he'd been through, raised his eyes, looked into Pilate's eyes and said, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Again, Pilate, a last time, tried to set Jesus free. But Caiaphas, the high priest, said, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar's. For anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. And Pilate realised he'd lose his job. Pilate took some water, he baptised his hands and said, I take no responsibility in the death of this man. And Caiaphas and the high priest said, we will bear the responsibility upon ourselves and our children. And Jesus, along with two other criminals, were led off to Golgotha, which is called the place of the skull. It was called that because that's where executions happened. Centurion Alexis, in charge of the command, said to the prisoners, we can do this the easy way or we can do this the hard way. Lie down on your crosses, lay out your arms. Jesus collapsed on his cross, so exhausted again from the beating, he embraced the cross. He was then nailed to it, and Pilate had one more shot at Herod Antipas in the crowd, where he named the charge sheet. Not Jesus of Bethlehem under his jurisdiction, but Jesus of Nazareth, who is King of the Jews. Jesus' first words were when he was raised up, were, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. The first words of the chief priests and the teachers of the law that followed were mockery. You who were going to Destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself. Look at him. He can save others, but he can't save himself. The thief that was put on the left of Jesus also mocked him and said, If you truly say who you are, get us down from the cross. Prove it. And the thief on the right rebuked the first thief and said, You and I have been punished for what we deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, Truly I tell you, today you will be in paradise. That was at nine o'clock, by twelve o'clock midday. Darkness covered the whole land. And something worse than the flogging something worse than the crucifixion happened to Jesus. At that point, the Heavenly Father turned his gaze from his own Son, dying on the cross. As all God's wrath and judgment on human wickedness fell on Jesus at that very time, and Jesus cried out to his own Dad, Dad, Father, Papa, why have you forsaken me? Finally, by 2.30, Jesus breathed his last. There was an earthquake, and he said, It is finished, as if a job has been accomplished. And he died. Two men then came along, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. They took him down from the cross. They took him to a fresh tomb. They put the body in the tomb. They closed the tomb. Friday finished, and Saturday came. The Roman soldiers were worried that the disciples would steal the body, so they placed a guard in front of the tomb. Saturday passed, Sunday came, the male disciples were nowhere to be seen. They were in hiding. The female disciples came, they wondered how they could remove the stone, but on Sunday morning the stone was removed, an earthquake came, the soldiers upped and ran away 
And Jesus came out alive, risen from the dead. Friends, Christians don't believe in a dead Lord. They believe in a risen Saviour. They don't believe that this is a myth or a tale, but this is actually true historical events. That when one day, hopefully in a long, long time, when we all face death, there is something beyond the grave, the resurrection for us all. Amen. Amen. We're now going to hear a song from the ensemble.